Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me at iMaginary. So this part will all be about opening and closing these doors. You can see that the pivot point is already set at the right position, so it will be easy to rotate. To open and close the doors, I want to use a raycast to determine which door we hit. And if we hit the door, we want to execute the script that opens the door. We only have one little problem and that's that the mesh of the door is, at, is a child of the door's pivot point. So we need to reference to the parent, but that will be for later. The first thing we're going to do, add a script to the door parent. Make sure you get the parent, because otherwise the door will flip in the wrong di direction. You could tell that you got the right one by the name or when you look at the pivot point. If you got the child, for example, you can see the pivot point is way offset. And when you click the door, it will automatically select the child, to be sure to select the parent. If you got the parent, you can see there's nothing on it, only a transform. So we're going to add the new component. And this will be the door script. So we make a new C sharp script, open it up. And we first want to make a function that changes the state of the door. And actually first we make a variable. This will be a public bool. And we call it open. We default it as false. So the door is actually closed at the beginning of the game. Let's clean this up a bit. I like to use it like this. And then we want to make a function that changes this state. So we can call it from with from our first person controller. This to, has to be a public void because these are private. And if you make a public void, we can assist them from other scripts. So a public void, and we call it change door state. We don't have to give any variables; only the name will be important. In this function, we want to say open is the opposite of open. So this will invert this boolean. So if it's true, it will set it to false. And if it's false, it will set it to true. Then here in the update is where the magic happens. So this will be the rotation of the door. We first want to check if we need to open the door or close it. So we write if open. And this is actually the same as open equals True, but this is way shorter so we use this and if we need to open the door we need to do something and else so if this isn't true so the door is should be closed we also want to do something and the first thing we're going to do is make a new quaternion and a quaternion is just a way of unity telling how to rotate it. So a quaternion is actually a rotation. And we call it temp rotation or actually target rotation. And this equals a quaternion dot Euler. And Euler is making sure that these numbers are within the range of minus 360 to 360 and not minus 1 and 1. So we get actually the degrees and we want to set it as zero. And now we need to have the angle of which the door is open and close. So we're going to make that. We make a public float and we call it door open angle. We default this as 90 degrees. And let's press the F. And also a public float for the door close angle. And we default this as zero. And we also want to make a float which is the smooth of the door. So actually how fast the door will move. And default this as two. So let's get back to our function. And this will be the door open angle. And then again zero. 
So what this is actually saying is the X, Y, Z rotation. And to open the door, we need to change the Y. So it's the vertical uh, axis. Then we want to use a built-in function in Unity to apply to our rotation. So we first say transform dot local rotation and this equals the built-in function in Unity which is the quaternion slurp. We first have to say what we want to rotate so this will be the transform dot local rotation. Then we want to add the quaternion where we want to rotate to and this will be the target rotation and then the speed so this will be the smooth times time dot delta time and this is almost the same for the close so we want to copy it and paste it in here and for this one we say temp uh, target rotation 2 and we also have to change it here number 2 so we don't mix this two together. And let's check if this is working. It's opening automatically. That shouldn't be true. Oh, we forgot to change this to door close angle. Okay, so it's now closed. And when we change this to open, it opens, but in the wrong direction. And we can easily fix this by the door open angle. And you can tell what angle you need to use by just rotating it here in the viewport. You can see that this Y number is changing to minus 90. So if we say here minus 90, it should rotate in a good direction. Let's change this back to zero. Uh, zero. So now it should rotate in the good direction. So it's now closed and when we hit open, the door opens. But we don't want to actually change this here in the expector, this open variable. We want to change it within the first person controller. So when we click on the door, it will open. And to do this, we go to the first person controller and Actually on the main camera we want to add a new script. So add component and this will be the interact script. And I'm not calling it door door interact or something like that because we want to change more things in the future. Like picking up items or many more possibilities. So let's call it interact script. Also open this up. And in the update, we want to check if we hit the left mouse button. And if we do that, we want to add a raycast. But first, the mouse. So we use input. If input dot get key down. Where is it? Get key down. And the down, we've seen it in the last tutorial. The down is just the moment when you press it down. And in here we say keycode.mouse0 and mouse0 is the left mouse button. You can look these different ones up at the Unity site. So if you press down the left mouse button, we want to make a new raycast. So we say ray and we just call it ray equals new ray. And if you take a look at here, you can choose with the arrows the sort of function, the sort of um, ray you want to create. We have an empty ray and an ray with two variables, so the origin and the direction. And the origin is where it starts and the direction is uh, the direction of which the ray will move. So the origin will be our transform that position. And because the script is applied to the camera, it will take the camera's position. And for the direction, we can say transform.forward. And forward is, is kind of the looking direction. So you can see this blue arrow is pointing forward, 
When we rotate the camera, this forward will always rotate the same direction as your component. So forward is just where you're looking at, for example. So this is the ray. Then we want to make a raycast hit. So we can store the information of the things we hit. And we call it hit. And we don't have to say new raycast hit or something like that. Because we'll apply it in a moment. And we also want to make a public variable. Which is the length that we can interact with. So we make a public float. Inter interact distance. And we default this at, I don't know how big this is, let's say 5. And we can delete this start for now. So now actually the raycast. We need to use the if statement for that. If physics dot raycast. And then we first have to say the ray. And again you can see here what kind of different rays you got and we are going to use this one so you can see the origin direction oh no actually not this one um, kind of this one not exactly this one we're just going to do it so then we hit out and this stores the very the this stores all the information and we want to store it in the hit and then we want to add the distance, so this will be our interact distance. If we leave this blank, the raycast will go unlimited far, but you can't actually open a door which is a mile away, so we only want to interact with things we are in front of. Interact distance, that's what I'm looking for. So this whole if statement only knows if we hit something, but not exactly what. So we want to make another if statement and check what we exactly hit. And we can do that by hit dot um, collider dot compare tag. And we want to check if the hit object has a tag door. And we're first going to apply this, otherwise we forget it later. So save the script and go to your door. And actually the mesh. Because we can only hit meshes or actually colliders. And here at tag, you can see that we don't have any door tag. But we can add a custom tag. You can change the size but we, also, but we already have one element free. So let's say door. And now go back to our door mesh and apply our tag. So now we know if we hit a door. But the script is at the parent and not this actually object. So we want to reference to the parent of the hitted object. So if we hit the door, hit dot collider, then dot transform dot parent and from the parent we want to get a component and the component will be the door script and then we want to execute the function we just made which is called change door state and then close the line so it's a bit long line but I hope it's working so from the hit, we want to go to the collider, then transform, and from the transform we're going to get the parent. So this will be the door hallway parent. Then we want to get the component, so this will be a door script. And from the door script, we want to execute the change door state function. If everything works, we should be able to open the door with the raycast now. Save everything. And it actually is working. I think the distance should be a bit larger. Or maybe not.
you can experiment with the distance. I think it's fine for now, yeah. So we can now open and close the doors, but we only miss something, and that's the sound. And to do this, we create an audio source at the door script, so the parent of the door. So add a new component, audio source, uncheck play on awake, and here assign the break barrel. It's not actually a door sound, but it will be fine. You can change this uh, sounds yourself. So just import a new sound of the door effect and apply it here. Then to play the sounds, we do it in the door script. And here where we change the state, we want to say audio.play. And because we already assigned the clip, we can just say audio play and don't have to say audio clip equals. So this will work if I'm right. Yeah, we can now hear a sound when we open or close the door. Now for the other doors, I deleted them, but that's not actually a good idea. Um, if you got the other doors, there shouldn't be any script or audio source. So the thing you have to do is just add the, add the door script, add the audio source, apply the sound effect and these numbers I'll come back later. I'll first apply my doors. So I've set up my doors again and as you can see I also got the door script and the audio source. But if you should play it now you can see that this one works okay. But these ones are acting very strange. This one is actually right but the wrong direction. So we're going to fix that. If you select this door, we can see that the close angle is at zero and that's okay. But if you rotate this door, the parent of it, to the place where we want it, you can see that this number is different from the open angle. So set the door up wherever you want it to be open, so mine is around 130, and then the door open angle, apply this number to it. So this will be okay, and reset it to zero, and do this for all doors. Make sure to get the parent again. So this door, for example, starts at 90 degrees, so the close angle should be 90 degrees, and the open angle is around 200 and reset this one again oh 90 and this one also this starts at 180 and we want to open it to around 280 and reset this again to 180 and then the last door, this one starts also at 180 degrees and it will go until say 80. And reset this one again. Also make sure these names are right. Okay, that's done. And if you now test the doors, everything should everything should work fine. And this will actually be the basement where we proceed to the next level. So when we enter this, we get the fade out and we proceed to the next level. So the doors are working now. We got the audio and I think that's it for this episode. In the next episode we will add some flashing lights. So for example this light over here will flash or flicker of how you how do you call it. And 
I think that will be a very short part. And after that, um, after that we're going to do the scary pop-ups. And the first thing will be a very simple one. It's just a, a TV screen with a monster on it. And when you get close to it, it will uh, scream. Mm, and in further episodes, we need to have keys for opening doors. And add more sound effects and make a perfect horror game. So I hope you liked this tutorial. And if you did, please leave a comment and like. And if you don't want to miss any tutorials, please subscribe. Also, you can share these tutorials. It helps me a bunch. Let me know in the comments what you think about this tutorial series. I really like communicating with you. So, if you got any questions, feedback, or just want to say something, please leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye, guys. I hope you liked this tutorial, and if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. If you got any questions or feedback, you can leave a comment down below. I've got a lot of other videos which might be interesting for you, you can check them out. So make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you again. Bye guys!